Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So let's get it. Let's do this. Let's do this here. We got Mac. We've got some guns. Do you want to talk about the Strybog? Because I think Walter is familiar with that. And, uh... And I think folks out there are familiar with probably with your video if they haven't seen it. You want to bring everyone up to speed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was just before our show, I was talking with a, a friend of mine that's also a YouTuber who called me up to say, hey, man, is your A3 a complete piece of junk? And I said, well, it's not a complete piece of junk. What's going on? Uh, so it, it's kind of funny. So I, I, I put my video out and, uh, you know, if you go back to the, the A1, I had problems with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, anytime I post a video that's not positive about a product, especially a popular product, you know, I get called all sorts of names and I'm only doing it for clicks and stuff, which is just asinine. Uh, I just open myself up to all sorts of crazy lawsuits. But, but you know, in the, in the case of the A1, I was vindicated when Global Ordinance and Grand Power made a joint statement saying, yes, we recognize the problems that Mac found in his video and this is how we're going to fix them. And, you know, that was a great, boon for them because everybody's like man that's how you that's how you handle problems that's that's awesome and then um and then we you know move on to the a3 which i was actually looking forward to a brand new roller delayed nine millimeter awesome looking forward to it mm -hmm. and so i got on gun broker and picked one up and uh i you know started shooting i've been shooting it for quite a while i was shooting 124 grain stuff i the federal 115 and 124 grain boxes look identical Turns out I was shooting all 124 grain and didn't shoot 115 until the day of actually filming. And that's when I started running into functional problems. And uh, and so I, I noticed two things about the A3. They, um, they still like hotter ammunition mm -hmm. and they still have garbage magazines. Hmm. And so, you know, I know people don't like hearing that, but it's the absolute truth. And once again, I was vindicated. Graham Bates, who has GB Guns on YouTube, he happens to be close personal friends with Jaro, who is the uh, owner of Grand Power and the, I think that the lead designer of the, the Strebog. And, um, you know, I talked to him and I'm not going to say what he told me in, in confidence, but, um, you know, he just posted a picture today of three new locking pieces with different cam angles on them mm. to resolve the ammunition problem that I've been saying the guns have had even in their blowback days. So all the people out there saying that I'm just making things up, it's just kind of funny because he just posted a picture of three new locking pieces with different cam angles to resolve a problem that, um, you know, people should be having with the guns depending on how, what variety of ammunition they shoot. If you shoot hot stuff, Guns are going to run fine, but it doesn't change the fact the magazines still have an engineering problem. They still bind up, and I demonstrate that in my A3 video. They even went so far as to redesign the magazine and make a steel-reinforced feed lip version, and all they had to do was just put a slight curve to it like a Scorpion Evo magazine, and they would have solved the binding issue. But no, the magazines were garbage, and you got to put oil in them or you know some sort of dry lube mm -hmm. just to keep them working, and even then... You know, they're, they're not 100%. Mm -hmm. So that's why I thought it was interesting. People in, in my video uh, commented that there's a company that had an adapter you could pop in that it would allow it to use Colt SMG mags. And I ordered one of those. And then you said something, Hank, that um, Safety Harbor offers a, a conversion for Glock mags. Yeah. Well, well he, go ahead. I want to try let, that. I'm, I'm going to let him, I'm going to let Walter talk. Go ahead, okay. Walt. I'll let oh, Walter I, I have questions. Mm-hmm. You started having problems with the Strebog when they changed the spring design, correct? Yes. So okay. So the first gen, the, ver the I call first gen, the first gen guns that came in the country that people had, I'm not talking about magazines, but just function and firing. For, for what I know, they didn't have any problems at all with that. No. So the I, first, the first gen gun that had the bar in there that fills that void, yeah, that whole, allows it, spent cases and live rounds to fall completely behind the bolt. Mm -hmm. Um, that was that was a good design. I have one of those, and that gun works great. The magazines are still flawed, but the gun works far so, better. So than can I ask you guys a question? Because I know Mac, you've got you've got uh, a couple of these guns. I've got all three of so, them. Yeah, so does Walter, and he makes stuff. I have three of them. Can you guys explain to me why they did the roller? Why did they go the roller route? Why was that? <laughs> You, you want me to talk? You want, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 go, go ahead. I, I, I'm <laughs> Walter, kind of. I'm, Walter's I, chuckling is interesting <laughs> here. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 
their first guns they made ran fine as an open bolt, as far as I was concerned. The f- ones with the original spring design, the, what sold me on the street bog, I watched videos on the internet, people just feeding all kinds of ammo through it, mm-hmm. whether it was, um, um, you know, all different weights, all different kinds. I call floor sweepings, mm-hmm. and it shot it. And then they changed the spring design, and they came into all these problems. And it's like, well, why did you change the spring design? You know, I know why. Uh, okay. It was cheaper. Probably. No, I know why. Yeah, it, it's it, it it has to do with cost. But mm-hmm. so the original gun that came in, like you mentioned, the one that had the rod in it that fills the void that you know keeps spent and live rounds from falling into the action. Well, they got rid of that because everybody seems to think that the A3 is a brand new gun, the roller delayed gun. The reality is the gun's been on the market in Europe since 2017. ATF was dragging its feet and approving the gun for import into the US. So Grand Power continued to manufacture the A1 just for the US market to keep feeding us guns. And so they were running two productions. They were running A1s just for the United States, but to the rest of the world, they were selling the A3 roller delay. I suspect, and I don't know the reason they went to the roller delay system, it has its benefits if done right, but it's it, the recoil impulse isn't drastically improved or lessened with the roller delay in my experience. But I think probably one of the reasons they went with the roller delay system is because they were given a lot of flack initially for basically knocking off the BNT APC-9. The original Strybog, Strybog uh, is a complete knockoff of the APC-9. And I don't think they liked having that reputation. So now by making it roller delayed, you can't say it's now a direct knockoff of the APC-9, which is blowback. I, I think that's probably one of the reasons they, they looked at doing that. In terms of recoil mitigation, it, I don't really notice much of a difference whatsoever. But the reason why the A1 Gen 2s got into problems was because of that whole thing where I told you they were manufacturing A1s and A3 simultaneously. They wanted to started. They wanted to see, well, are there parts in the A3 we can put in the A1 until we get the A3 approved for the U.S. market. And so to streamline production, they were putting A3 parts in the A1, one of which was the recoil system. It's a simplified version. It gets rid of the rod that fills the void where live rounds and spent cases can fall into. And the spring wound up being too heavy, which caused my functional problems that resulted in my video that, you know, ultimately ended with Global Ordinance and Grand Power saying, we're sorry, we're going to offer weaker springs. Um, Jaro keeps blaming American ammunition as being weak. And that's simply not true. I have European viewers that tell me that they pretty much shoot the exact same ammunition we do. Nobody out there runs plus P and plus P plus ammunition through their guns. It's just as expensive and hard to find uh, in Europe as it is here. Mm-hmm. You know, people pretty much globally use just standard 124 grain or 115 grain range ammo. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's how they got into the problem with the recoil springs. They were trying to use A3 parts and A1s. But now that the A3 is on the market, it still isn't capable of running a a variety of commonly available range ammunition. So now um, GB Guns has posted a picture of new locking pieces that are presumably going to allow the gun to run with regular range ammunition. It still doesn't address the magazine problem. The magazines are a hot mess. Yeah. So do you, what, what do you think about that, Walt? Are you seeing any of the problems with the new one? I know that we, I haven't shot that that much with you. So. I haven't either. I haven't shot the new one either that much. The re- main reason I bought the new one to make sure that my stock fit on the back. Yeah. <laughs> because when it's we, the same when we, gun. Everything's the same except for that. Well, bolt changes. So was so, so was the A1. For, so was the first gen and the second gen supposed to be the same, but when they machined the receiver in the back, then my stock didn't fit on some of the oh, guns. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then so I was selling stocks to Grand Power, and they were sell. I mean, Glo- uh, Global Ordnance, because I went down and talked to them. They're local for us. And they were selling my stuff and da da da. But then when this when the newer guns came in and there was an issue with the stock in the back, people were giving them a hard time because their stock wouldn't fit on the gun. And then they started bragging on me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, it's not my fault the gun changed in the back. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and, that's uh, all it takes. <laughs> that's all it took. <laughs> and it was 50-50. Some people's guns it went right on, and other people's guns it would go three quarters away on stop. So we fixed the problem on our end. We we actually loosened the tolerances up a little bit, or we just spread the spread the uh, things apart a little further. Mm-hmm. And now it goes on everything. So, but um, I got the A3 just to check out to make sure that my stock still fit on. I haven't shot that many rounds through it. Yeah, um, I think it's neat. I you know the the roller delay system that they built into it is 
extremely simple and very oh. elegant in design. I mean, it's it's really quite ingenious. It's far simpler than the HK system. Oh yeah, yeah. But um, but, but do you really need it? No, I mean, you it's, don't. It, I mean, and it didn't. If you weigh the guns, it doesn't even weigh much less than you know the blowback yeah. version, the Gen right. Two. So, By the time they got, they went to the non-reciprocating charging handle. They they tried to lighten it up some, but the difference really isn't that great. Uh, you'll see people out there talking like, oh, man, it's night and day difference. No, it's not. It's not. If, if you're even a, a little bit objective, you're going to say it's there is a difference in the recoil impulse, but it's not night and day. Yeah. yeah so it's... looking at that video, I was thinking and I was teasing you yesterday that uh, as an old man now, you can't load magazines. But I was looking, I mean, seriously, that is a that is a problem when you're trying to load and you get to a certain point and then it's oh, really their mags load terribly hard. Yeah. So <laughs> put a little bit of oil in there and it'll, it'll work for you there, Walter. Matter of fact, I was at the Epic shoot and Global Ordnance was there. Global Ordnance was there showing the uh, the Strebog off, mm -hmm. and I think his name's Josh was there, and he's like, "Hey man, thanks for the oil tip because the guns were, you know, having problems. It was raining mm -hmm. and the guns were stumbling, and he was putting oil in the magazines and made it much easier to load and made the guns more reliable." Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you got to put some sort of dry lube or wet lube in the magazines just to get them to work right. In the video, you can I'm like on the 20th round or so, and I'm pushing down. You actually hear the magazine go, <laughs> like you're grinding and crunching inside. And then you know I start showing how the rounds when you try to push them out, they you know there's no spring pressure whatsoever, and the rounds just pop out of the magazine. Yeah. Um, it's it's a horrible magazine design, and and I don't know if it's just being stubborn, and it, you know, they don't want to admit they're wrong, but come on, guys, it's so simple to fix. Well, okay, I mean, I, I, <laughs> just I like curve to it, or just use the scorpion mag and well, call it a day. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> you're you're kind of right that it's simple, but then you know, it's a whole different mold. <laughs> you know, well, if you if you are doing that but curve, they right? changed the mold tank. Mm -hmm. They the, the new magazine requires new molds. Oh, so yeah, they might they should have done it. If then. they were going to go that far, they should have just put the dang curve in the magazine to sense. account for the, the case taper of the nine millimeter cartridge. And they would have had a, a great magazine. Yeah, that's, but that makes sense. So let me. Sometimes pride gets in the way of things, I guess. That's you, true. That's true. So let me get these two questions in here while we're on this subject. Uh, my apologies, Roy, if I don't know. That's okay. Uh, I'm learning stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just being quiet and learning stuff on this. <laughs> so Kermit loves I, ba Kermit loves bacon. Says, did Walt make a lower for it that runs Glock mags? Which the answer yeah, is. Yeah, that's what that's what we're doing. Yeah, and uh, Kentucky Guns and Radio says, Walter, please, please, please. Make a CZ Scorpion Max version for the Strybog. So, yeah. I agree. That'd be awesome that, if you could make that work. Yeah. Mac, would, maybe I'm you actually, can convince him to stop making mini bikes and get that. Because <laughs> Walter, so uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of backstory here, Mac. So, you know, okay. this, gun, this gun thing's gotten kind of tough. I don't know. Tell me if I'm saying... If I'm saying the wrong things, Walt. So Walter's gotten a little burnt out, and and you know he's still making doing his stuff, his thing over there. But he's gotten heavy into mini bikes. We need to get him back over to making these <laughs> adapters so we can put some Glock. I just got there. I just got a quote back on another part for the adapter. Yes. Oh, okay, all just, right, yeah. Just just be cool, you know. Yeah. So what it is? It's a whole lower the whole lower receiver that's machined out of aluminum. It takes AR-15 parts, AR grips, mm -hmm. uh, AR trigger parts. That is like. The European street bogs do, mm -hmm. from what I understand. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just a matter of you have to you have to uh, modify the bolt or provide a new bolt, and um, pretty much that's it yeah. to make it run properly. It's not correctly. serialized, right? It's not a serialized. No, the ser on the on the yeah on the street bog lower the upper is the, the gun. Yeah. So yeah. you got lucky on that yeah. one. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, the CZ magazine. I wish I would have started that one first, to be honest with you. Because we later after we go, I don't even think I have to modify the bolts for it to run a CZ mag. So, uh, oh. and it's, so, and so it's which, ones, which one would be better? Should we just go CZ well, mag because like PSA is making those mags cheap, right? Yeah, they're fifteen dollars, you know, and they run, yep. they work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, does it have to be Glock good. mag? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could start over. Yeah, yeah. we can do that. Uh, Actually, it, it wouldn't. It probably wouldn't take that much to just redesign the lower to take the thing, and it, yeah, it's. It's Hurry just up, you know, for Christ's sakes, before before uh, military arms channel loses his all his thumbs. <laughs> trying to load up Mac. Now that's my question: Does anybody make a mag loader for the Shreebog Mag? A real mag loader? No one has, have they? I think there's a universal, but I don't know if they. Yeah, have yeah those things are. There's those probably an Lula or yeah, 
yeah. version that would work with it. There's kind of, I know there's versions out there for various different double stack nine millimeter mags like Colt, Newsy, stuff like that. But there, there has to be a universal one that works. Why yeah. doesn't Streetbuck, I mean, they're in Europe. Why don't you just go over to Italy and talk to Mekar and have a real mag made? <laughs> they, they totally redesigned the thing anyway. They should have just put a curve to it and called it a day. Oh, or, that's true. Yeah, you yeah, know, put a little... just knocked on the door next to them and said, hey, you know, send us some Scorpion mags. We'll just use those. <laughs> Yeah. They're commonly available for nineteen dollars, and they work. Yeah. Yeah. Why does this true. become so tough? Like, why are companies seriously here? Why are companies fighting over the magazines? There are good magazines out there, and and by the way, even though I'm a, a Glock mag fan, I don't necessarily think that the Glock mags are the best. They no. work great in Glocks, <laughs> but they don't work all the time in in ARs that are supposed to, you know, nine millimeter ARs that are supposed to use them. Right? We don't always get last round bolt hold open and all that but there's yeah, things that's... out there why not go with stuff that's out there and go listen why do we even killing ourselves over this if there's this good magazine to use it i don't know maybe be... Roy can talk about that is there some sort of like licensing issue there roy or you there, know would, it, could, it would CZ say don't do this it would depend it would depend i mean i can think of examples of of companies who have been real close to the vest with their what they consider their intellectual baby, their 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 creation, uh, without naming a certain company. I think of a certain uh, cartridge, maybe named <laughs> after an Icelandic saga hero. Oh, that one of them was 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 allowed to be made by other people, and one of them really wasn't. Yeah. If, if that rings any bells, it, it's just really going to be company to company. I mean, there's some there's some companies who I do think think. Uh, hey, if, if we have this thing take proprietary mags that only we make, then folks who buy the gun will have to buy five or six mags from us, which is another yeah. source of profit. True. Or uh, uh, there are other companies who think, well, by gosh, we don't want the stinking competition supplying the mags uh. for our gun. Uh, and, and then there are other, you think of other examples of guns uh, put out by a pretty large company, a 9 millimeter handgun that does take, Mags not made by them. I mean, you had several examples of guns like that. So I think it just, it really varies. It depends on the individual circumstances of which specific company you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, I think there was some good, I think there were probably some good points in there. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.